now we will come to one uh, numerical problem of them. So, the first is calculate the pH 2 uh, H 2 O and H 2 ratio for hydrogen and uh, water gas mixture at equilibrium with partial pressure of oxygen of 10 to the power minus 6 at 1600 degree Celsius. Um, so, this is uh, given the reaction hydrogen reacting with the oxygen is giving you water all are gaseous and the free energy data is given for that at uh, 1600 degree Celsius or so 1873 Kelvin. As you know the uh, from the free energy the equilibrium constant of this would be P H 2 O divided by P H 2 and into P O 2 to the power half that is a K. So, we substitute the, that one the free energy expression. So, R T log K. So, the you substitute that equilibrium and we uh, from this one because uh, delta G is given we can put it here R and T are known we can and <coughs> this also oxygen partial pressure is given 10 to the power minus 6. If we substitute all these values we can calculate the ratio of pH 2 or to pH 2 which is about 9.5. Um, so, so that is our first question to calculate the ratio of partial pressure of H2O2 hydrogen. Now, it has also also predict whether solid FeO by this gas mixture at temperature 1000 degree Celsius. So, it actually it says uh, whether solid FeO can be reduced. Um, so, something is missing it is a whether solid FeO can be reduced by this gas mixture at temperature 1000 degree Celsius. So, now uh, if we take the reduction of that uh, with the hydrogen. So, this is the equation and then we can uh, get from subtracting this uh, free energy data. So, that gives the free energy of 3734 joules per mole and uh, the equilibrium constant is P H 2 O by P H 2. Uh, so, if we substitute all the value temperature here would be um, 1273 degree Kelvin and this is a universal gas constant. So, you get uh, pH 2 or pH 2 ratio 0.7. So, in that way really your partial pressure so hydrogen has increased and which is a more reducing one. So, if you look at that where this had increased this ratio to reduce uh, to reduce uh, FeO, this ratio or reverse of that should be higher or this should be lower. So, under this condition actually actual one is 9.5, so it is be lower. So, 0 0.7 which means uh, this uh, put, uh, this mixture can reduce uh, the FeO under this condition. Okay, because this is a low value more hydrogen uh, is there and at 1000 degree if you recall our FeOH uh, system which we talked before and there we said after uh, 821 degree Celsius hydrogen um, reduce, reduction potential is much more than, uh, than the CO and certainly this uh, mixture would be able to reduce um, boost it into iron. Here is another example um, 
so consider the following reaction um, where carbon burning it is sort of occurring at 1000 degrees Celsius. So, using the stoichiometric calculation calculate the relative quantities of the reac reactant products and the composition of these products. So, if we choose uh, we can always choose some sort of unit uh, basis uh, like we had chosen chosen before one mole. Now, we choose one kilogram. So, converting it, it into the number of moles for reactant. So, one kilogram of carbon would be 80, uh, 83.3 moles. So, that is a normal way you know about to convert it into the mole. Similarly, you can convert the oxygen and uh, CO also uh, in, in terms of moles. Now, air contains about 21 mole percent of oxygen and 79 mole percent of nitrogen. So, which again if you convert it, this will give you uh, in terms of moles because this is percentage 156.5 moles of nitrogen enters with air uh, and appears in the product. So, whatever uh, nitrogen is appearing here in the uh, air will just come out uh, as a product uh, as we know nitrogen does not react to these any other product with or reactant which are present there at that temperature especially. So, knowing that so converting the number of moles of reactant and product into suitable unit and air volume also entering you know uh, uh, this is a oxygen and nitrogen uh, we calculated uh, here oxygen moles and nitrogen moles. So, and we multiply it uh, with a, a 22.4 uh, as you know at STP the volume of the uh, gas then you can get uh, 4.4 into 10 to the power 3 normal liter. So, this the unit is normal liters which uh, you convert into normal meter cube per kg uh, would be this of carbon. Uh, similarly, the product uh, um, for uh, um, C, CO is coming out if you look at this one in CO is coming out and nitrogen and CO we calculated 83.3 moles. So, th that is the one and the nitrogen can multiply with the volume you get normal meter cube of gas. So, gas composition would be now you can convert that one uh, again as we when in a reverse form what we did here. So, you will get 34.7 mole percent of CO and 65.2 25 mole percent of nitrogen in that way. So, so now actually we are going to go to another topic till now we talked about the physical chemical uh, uh, phenomena um, which is occurring in the blast furnace in short and some sort of mass balance also we dealt with not much with the heat balance, uh, but after knowing this uh, physical physio chem, uh, physical chemical phenomena and the uh, um, charge which we talked about uh, carbon, hematite, limestone and, and their size, their preparation all these things and many times we talked about the pressure drop or permeability of the burden of the charge without knowing what is it. Um, so, we come to another topic uh, like the aerodynamics of the upper zone of blast furnace. So, in this uh, lecture I will be talking more about the upper zone of the blast furnace. Um, when we say aerodynamic mostly you are talking about the 
airflow or gas flow uh, in the blast furnace. So, the burden within the blast furnace offers resistance to the gas flow. Uh, assume if there is a uh, um, just a tube or, uh, or blast furnace is there without any uh, material. So, gas will not uh, um, uh, have any sort of resistance uh, for the flow. So, it will just go without much resistance um, to the top, but if you put some material. So, naturally uh, that material will offer the resistance to the gas flow and gas would always like to pass through the least resistance path. So, when you are putting the um, granular ma material especially, uh, so it will form some void. So, gas will uh, try to pass through the re least resistance path that is through those voids. So, more resistance to gas flow would lead to higher pressure drop. So, that void if they are uh, uh, smaller and smaller it or in one way the resistance is more it will lead to higher pressure drop and blast in intake is affected that which you are putting from the bottom and your pump capacity everything is going to get affected and thus the non-uniformity of the gas flow or in one way the mal distribution of gas flow what we call it will occur uh, in the region. So, non-uniformity of the gas flow results in poor contact between the gas and solid and thus affecting the heat and mass transfer and thus the production. So, because gas always will try to take a least resistance path. So, what it will do? It may bypass some of the um, uh, uh, pores or voids and where the, it is a least resistive near the wall and like that it may go through that. So, in terms what is going to happen? There would be a very less gas and solid contact and gas is the CO uh, and nitrogen which is coming which uh, gives the um, sensible heat to the charge and uh, CO also takes part in the reduction. So, that is not going to take place effectively. So, that is going to affect the heat and mass transfer. So, gas flow phenomena is most important in the blast furnace from production viewpoint and that is why this topic is about aerodynamics we call it. So, to understand that a bit, so effect of gas flow in the blast furnace probably this will give you a little uh, a better idea this picture. Um, so, you gas is coming um, in through the tube and burning it over here in front of the tube producing reducing gas CO and nitrogen. And in this uh, reason Bose region or dropping zone belly and Bose region what we call is uh, the dropping zone. In this one only coke particle they are in solid and slag and liquid ion is coming down. So, and when you are having high uh, gas generation CO and nitrogen here uh, this liquid offer the resistance to the gas flow. So, now gas is not just getting the resistance through the solid present here even from the liquid. So, very complex situation over, over here and this may lead sometime to flooding and stopping of the blast furnace even. So, that is a very bad condition for the production and as you go up so, if you do not have a good permeability this is showing the coke layer which is porous uh, in a nature because coke is uh, like here it retains its shape. So, its particles and between the particles voids are there. So, gas can pass through it however, or get semi fused. So, uh, the pores between the particle of ores get reduced. 
So, very less permeability that is what we are calling about the permeability means quite a low void fraction in the gas uh, in the ore region where semi fused. So, this region is uh, more about the cohesive zone where semi fused material is there. So, gas is mostly passing through the coke. So, if coke layer is not there separately it is very difficult for gases to pass from here uh, and because they can uh, they have a very high resistance here. Then you have a uh, problem uh, uh, here. Then once it goes so this is the normal operation if you have a good permeability good uh, uh, this uh, voidage uh, in the coke layer and it can then pass gas through here. Now, if you come to the upper region again the same problem coming it is about the burden distribution. Now, if you do not have a uh, uniform uh, particle size and the narrow range of distribution of the particle you are going to have a problem because if it is not a narrow range size a smaller particle can fill up these void interstices and then will offer more resistance to the gas. So, again there is a problem about the pressure drop uh, increment and now very fine particle because gases gas has to pass through this uh, uh, in voidage. So, through interstices so, essentially the velocity of the gas increases quite a lot through these voids. So, in and sometime this velocity can be that high uh, when small particles are there that can be carried away what you call the fluidization in fact of those particles occurring or elutriation and these particles can be uh, carried out in the uh, outgoing gas. So, you are losing quite a bit and fluidization sort of thing is occurring over here. So, that is why decrypitation and all those properties which we talked about the material becomes very very important uh, uh, due to this gas flow and things. So, all these things what we have talked till now are related to this aerodynamics of the blast furnace and due to which we need all this elaboration uh, about the preparation of raw material and everything because that should satisfy all these condition here otherwise your gas flow uh, will be erratic and hold your production and even the blast per performance would be erratic. So, this is very important part. So, we will start with a little basic of it as many of you may not be aware about this some of the term. So, therefore, a good understanding of gas flow in granular or porous media is essential the precursor to understand the blast furnace performance. So, we will go a little bit to a basic of the thing. <coughs> so, so, packed weight and fluidized weight. So, when this granular material is uh, packed like this we call it as a packed weight and when it is uh, particles are blowing away and they are not in contact we usually call it the fluidization of that uh, just a very in a rough way I am telling you about the meaning of this. So, in metallurgical processes we have many of those uh, packed weight and fluidized weight uh, reactor blast furnace, direct reduced iron furnace, sub type kin, sintering which we had discussed, cupola, roasting, flash smelting, corex etcetera. And in all of these not just one type various type of flow occur in these system. Co current upflow where the solid and fluids are flowing in the same direction are travelling. And then co current downflow where solid and fluid, fluid we are using because fluid can have anything either a gas or liquid. So, the common word is fluid for that 
when you refer it. So, it could be gas or liquid. So, down co current downflow the solid and the fluid are traveling down together and you remember this is the one uh, situation which we discussed uh, just now for the uh, blast furnace co current uh, indirect reduction process in which we showed that uh, that is quite inefficient and the consumption of the coke is the maximum about 1060 kg coke is needed per ton of iron. So, that is one of the example which we took also. This is uh, about the fluidization or zero net um, solid flow. So, where your solid particle is um, just suspending in the fluid and fluid is having that much velocity which is just able to suspend it or um, uh, fancy gravity and the drag force are getting balanced here and it is just in a suspended form, but fluid is still mo moving, but not the particle solid. Then you have a counter current flow where solid also has the sufficient now under gravity and other forces not balanced. So, solid is also moving down and fluid is moving upward direction and this is the situation uh, occurs in blast furnace. So, that is why we call the blast furnace as a counter current reactor. So, that is a counter current flow solid is moving down and fluid is moving up and then you have an another one where solid is moving up and fluid is moving down that that is happen when the fluid uh, solid uh, has a lower density than the fluid. In that condition solid is moving up and fluid is going down and you can have also horizontal uh, uh, this uh, conveyor where solid and fluid moving uh, in the same direction. Uh, beside that we there are only few, but uh, there are some others one is cross flow. If you look at you know about the sintering, we talked about the sintering. So, in sintering the suction is occurring from the bottom. So, gas is traveling like this and sinter strand is moving in this direction. So, it is like a cross flow. So, gas is moving perpendicular to the solid uh, movement. So, that type of flow you call the cross flow. So, like this uh, you can help you other flows. Uh, so, that gives you the idea of different types. So, these three flows you are already aware of it. So, now how do we define the packed weight? Um, okay. So, packed weight has a ca ca character uh, is characterized by the following parameter. Uh, one is the void fraction, uh, void of porosity um, what we call it between the particle, particle size, particle shape factor. So, if you take this one figure then uh, it is shifted a little this side. So, there is a um, container or the tube you can assume and packed with the particles in which uh, uniform size particles. So, you can uh, see the voids are formed between the particle. So, there is nothing except the gas. So, when you are injecting the gas through this, so gas has to pass through these void days. So, that is the one. So, one of the characteristics of the bed, the void days of porosity what we call it this one void fraction particle size and particle shape vector. At in this one we have assumed just uh, one particle and that too also a spherical. You can have a even cylindrical particle uniform one and you can have even the mixed particle any shape. So, the void fraction how it is defined is the total volume of the bed minus volume of solid particle. Um, divided by the total volume of the bed. So, if the total volume of the bed is V V minus V S divided by this. So, that is a 
in a non dimensional way the unitless quantity actually. So, uh, this gives you the void fraction of the bed. So, whenever you talk about the packed bed uh, question would be asked what is the void fraction. So, the void fraction meaning is this. Then the diameter of a sphere or the of equal volume to particle is called the volume equivalent diameter. So, usually you define the di uh, packing uh, of this in terms of volume equivalent diameter of the particle. Um, and then you have a um, like a shape factor. So, so, surface area of a uh, sphere of equal volume of to particle and surface area of the particle that gives you the shape factor. So, if uh, you take a spherical particle, so surface area of a sphere of equal volume to particle, it is a uh, um, surface area of the uh, sphere and um, and then surface area of the particle and if your particle is uh, spherical, so that is really cancelled out it will give you 1. So, a spherical particle the shape factor is 1, but for other type of particle if they are not spherical you can calculate the shape factor and which should be multiplied with the uh, equivalent uh, diameter and that will give you the effective uh, particle diameter. And there are different uh, uh, shape factor for various uh, quite well known uh, material. So, for pul pulverized coal like shape factor is 0 0.73 when you say about 100 micron size of pulverized coal really you have to multiply it with uh, 0.73 to get the correct uh, um, equivalent diameter of that. Similarly, like silica powder, fluidus, so and this can be even measured if uh, it is not there, but these are the few well known material. 